Hey, what's up you guys? This is Sentai22 here with a video game review for you. And today I'll be checking out the Sega Nomad. Now the Sega Nomad is essentially a Sega Genesis handheld. Um, for its time it was very revolutionary. You can take your Sega Genesis games and you know play them on the go, wherever you go, at your grandma's house or your friend's house. I mean it was just a really great great handheld unfortunately this came out at the time where the PlayStation and the Nintendo 64 and the Sega Saturn were being released so it was just no purpose in releasing this thing um, I remember as a kid I had like this piggy bank I wanted this thing I mean this thing would just look so awesome uh, you know seeing pictures of it on the Toys R Us catalog I mean it was just a really really awesome thing you know and I had a bunch of Sega Genesis games and you know it'd be really awesome to take them on the go with me so you know I saved and saved but then I realized you know I was just interested in the newer stuff so I didn't really bother getting this and you know a lot of kids back then they were just were uninterested in getting this because of course you know the newer stuff were coming in and just didn't really serve the purpose um, but yeah I mean this was very revolutionary for its time um, it was originally the Sega Mega Jet. Now, the Sega Mega Jet was a semi-portable system that was um, put in a Japanese airline. It did not have a dis it did not have a display screen on its own. The Mega Jet. It was just a semi-portable Sega Mega Drive, pretty much. And so they utilized the Sega Mega Jet technology and utilized this while using the uh, display screen. So, now this thing is a brick, I'll tell you that for sure. Almost pretty much in the same comparison as the Game Gear. I wish I had the Game Gear in comparison, but I don't. But uh, just to give you that idea, I mean, this thing is a brick. And if you put the uh, battery pack in there, uh, it probably makes it even worse because it makes it more heavier than it is. Um, by the way, guys, I did not have, I did not buy the battery pack. I actually bought this online for a cheap price uh, for uh, 60 bucks. Uh, I wish I could have get the uh, the battery pack, but I didn't really bother because this thing was a battery eater. I mean, you think the play, PlayStation Portable was that bad? The first release I'm referring to of the PlayStation Portable. This was was a beast. Well, the difference between the PlayStation Portable is like you recharge it. You had to buy batteries once it ran out, you know, so it was it was a very, very difficult thing, I guess, for a lot of parents in a way, but... Alright, now let's check out the controllers. As you can see, we have this nice, um, you know, directional pad. Very comfortable, a lot better than the Sega uh, Genesis uh, directional pads, really nice. Got these nice buttons as well. Really, really cool. And of course, the modes, the start... Um, here in the bottom you have a, a Sega Genesis control port if you want to play with a friend which was a good which was pretty awesome too you can also use the multi um, the multi tap I think that's what it was called the multi tap so you can play with other friends as well and, you know and if you look here on top you have the AV input so you can uh, actually uh, play it on your TV, which also is a Genesis uh, console as well. So it's a portable and a console at the same time. And of course, you have your cartridge ports right here. I know this does play Sega Mega Drive games, but it it is very difficult to put them in there. So if you want, you can take out these two tabs on the side, but you have to be very very careful. If you don't want it, if you want to completely original don't even bother it just use a game genie I'll show you guys in about a few minutes and you got your uh, DC uh, input you can use your the one that came with the Nomad or the uh, Sega Genesis Model 2 uh, power adapter so and of course you have your power on and off so alright now let's let's get started now shall I'm gonna show you guys some gameplay on this Nomad, so let's take a look. Alright, now I just turn off the room lights just to give you an idea of the picture quality of the Sega Nomad, so I'm about to turn on the system here, so here we go. I'm 
play a little bit of uh, Altered Beast. Now the picture quality is really nice in person. Um, don't judge it by the camera that you see in the video, but it's just really fantastic picture quality. Um, there is some blurriness, but you know what did you what do you expect with uh, 90s technology? You know, there's a lot of blurriness in a lot of the old school handhelds uh, of the time. So, I mean, you can get a modded LCD screen for these, but uh, it just just ruins the originality of the system. But that's up to you. Alright, that's about it. I don't want to stretch this video any further. Now, for those of you who are wondering, uh, does it also play your Sega Mega Drive games? Well, you may have to try, but it just wouldn't. I did for myself with the Sailor Moon game, but it really takes a lot of force to it. I honestly don't recommend that. What I do is just take the Game Genie, And just and just attach the Mega Drive game on top of it. it. Does look a little bit awkward, don't you think? And yes, you have to enter the codes every time you uh, play the Mega Drive games. Like I said before, in my uh, Sega and my retro game tips, you have to put the region code in order to unlock the game. So let me just show you that. But first, I'm going to turn off the lights again, just to give you guys an idea. A little trivia for you guys, uh, the Sega Nomad was not the first uh, handheld to play console games. As a matter of fact, the Turbo Express uh, played the Hue cards uh, from the TurboGrafx-16. So just to give you guys that info, um, this thing was very revolutionary for its time. Unfortunately, 
it came way way too late at the end of the Sega Genesis lifespan I mean if this came out during the early era of the Sega Genesis then it would have sold like hotcakes I mean you would have seen people just taking these things on the go regardless of the battery power you know but this thing would have just sold like hotcakes because you could have taken your games on the go anywhere um, but unfortunately it was just way way too late to release this all in all it is a great handheld to collect as for a casual gamer I don't recommend this um, if you have a Sega Genesis then there's no really need to get this um, you know because these things can fetch up to around 80 sometimes a hundred dollars on eBay so uh, I definitely don't recommend it if you're a casual gamer however if you're a Sega collector like myself then this is a must so anyway guys that's about it hope you guys enjoyed this uh, review join me next time we'll have other reviews on consoles and other games that I'm gonna do in the near future so please guys comment as well as subscribe this is Sentai22 and uh, thanks for watching.